Hi, this is Bailey at the Woodway here in Fairbanks, Alaska. This video is to answer frequently asked questions about blaze camps. So we have our demonstration stove here that has been cut away. I'm going to be going through all of the parts, what they're called, some things to check, and how they should be properly operated. We'll start with the loading door. This is called the loading door. This is called the loading door handle. The door handle has a latch and some door handle latches can be replaced with two screws. This one does not have two screws. We'll have to punch out that roll pin to get this door handle off. This is your door gasket. It's probably 7 8 diameter door gasket. And your glass gasket is behind that in a channel, glass retainer channel. And uh, you must replace the door gasket if you are going to replace the glass gasket. We can check our gaskets by for the glass. We pinch the glass between our hands and wiggle. If there's any movement, it's probably time to replace the glass gasket. We can do a dollar bill, or I'm sorry, the loading door gasket, dollar bill test. Pinch a dollar bill at various places around the door. If it's hard to get out of there. It's probably tight enough. That's okay. But if it just fell out of there, no tension, it'd be time to replace the, glass, the door gasket. Most Blaze King doors come off easily by just wiggling up and pulling them off. You'll be able to tell if that's not an option for you. This door handle is also often replaceable, depending on your model. It should screw on and screw off. The door catch is also often replaceable and even adjustable if you need to make it tighter. You would loosen this nut, loosen the nut that's inside of the stove, tighten the catch by screwing it in, and then tightening those lock nuts again. On the Blaze King, you will find the bypass door handle. This bypass door handle is closed. Now the bypass door handle is open when I have it pulled towards the front of the stove. And uh, the bypass door handle can come off quite easily, but there's only one way that it can go back on. Close the bypass door. Now we're showing proper operation of the bypass door. Right now it's in the closed position. We're going to open it up by pulling the lever towards us. You see that horizontal rod cams along the metal within the bypass door to open it. Closing it. And you push it all the way down until it locks into place. One more time, open, close, perfect. Now sometimes this bypass door will not operate properly. There's two main reasons that I'm aware of this can happen. First being, most likely being that the bypass door has come out of its hinge channel here. You could be missing a bypass retainer clip. We'll get a better view of that in a minute. But if that's missing and the door comes out of its hinge channel, it can get misaligned on that horizontal rod. Another problem could be that you've got buildup happening just anywhere in this system. If there's creosote buildup, etc., that can cause it to be misaligned. Uh, now, if you are finding that everything operates properly, but you're not getting that solid seat, again, could be build up, or you could adjust the tension of this bottom plate here by tightening this bolt and tightening the lock nut that's there to really get the locking action. Okay, now we're going to check out the combustor. So inside of our stove here, we have the flame shield. 
just rests in there like this on these two um, holders. <laughs> There's your flame shield. It evenly distributes heat across the front of the combustor. It is an important component. It also protects the combustor from getting hit with debris. There we see our combustor. This is a metal combustor. Some are made of ceramic. You can get a flathead screwdriver and pry around the edges of it to get it out or push from the back if you have access through the flue collar. There's our combustor. New combustors come pre-gasketed like this with the tape. You leave the tape on if you're going to be replacing with a brand new combustor. Okay. Replacement combustor gasket is also available if you just want to take your combustor out for cleaning. So now we've taken the combustor and the flame shield off. This is the dome guard. There should be no reason to ever take this apart. Usually it will just break. Please don't do that. Uh, this is our combustor housing up here. And this is where we see the bypass retainer clips that I mentioned earlier on either wall of the combustor. So that lives on the inside on either side. We'll take both of them out. The little ear tab goes towards the back. back and that is what is holding the bypass door in its channel. Now we're going to talk about removing the bypass door for service of the bypass gasket. First thing I like to do is take out our probe thermometer. This is the probe thermometer telling you the temperature of the combustor. It's either four inches long or two inches long should you need a replacement. And we'll come in here and first we're going to remove this nut with a 7 16 socket. Now we can remove the bypass door. We need to lift it up and out of its hinges. Hinges being its little pivot point there. We need to get that up and over. Okay. And now we can remove this bypass door. The bypass door gasket is five eighths. You'll need about three to four feet of that. We're gonna put it back together for you, starting with our bypass retainer clips. If you don't have these, highly recommend just picking up another set to keep that bypass door in its hinges. So bypass retainer clips first, combustor with the tabs or rim on the two sides and the bottom of it going in at a straight angle there should be nice and tight then the flame shield with the triangles pointed down goes up here and fits a bit loosely there okay now we're going to talk about proper operation of the bimetallic coil thermostat on the back of your Blaze King. Right away we'll take the cover off so you can see what's going on inside there. It does say no user serviceable parts inside. Do not remove this cover. So we do officially recommend a chimney sweep perform any kind of service on this part but if you don't have access to a chimney sweep uh, this does not void your warranty or anything. Just put it back on. Now to take it off there will be two screws here and here, we ask that you don't touch this one. That screw is only a limiter to keep your thermostat flap from going over the wrong direction, okay? So, if you're going to put this back on, we recommend having that flap closed all the way so as not to interfere with the stopper screw as it goes back on. Now, how this should operate. There's usually only one stop point on this dial. It may spin farther than you expect it to, but it should be stopping when the white mark is down at 6 o'clock. Newer stoves do have a positive stop on the low end of the thermostat. This does not change the tension adjustment or anything else.
and you can see here the set screw that has created that stopping effect with the flap at its most open point. As we close it all the way down, you can see the thermostat will have probably closed long before your dial stops moving. That is normal. Now if this dial is spinning freely, apart from the knob and the thermostat, there is a set screw on the back side, opposite the white line, that you'll need an Allen key to access. What we recommend is getting this knob spun, or this horizontal bar spun, into a place where the set screw is stopped. Like I said, it needs to line up with 6 o'clock here, and then you tighten the dial while it's pointing at 6 o'clock. That'll fix a lot of issues. If your thermostat is, if your dial is attached to the knob but the, but the whole rod is just spinning in circles, or if the whole rod is very tight and hard to spin, there is a way of adjusting this set screw along with this pressure washer here to adjust the tension of the whole mechanism and we'll cut to that video now. Okay, the first step here to adjusting the thermostat is we have to make a mark where the set screw is on the stainless steel rod here. The reason is we don't want this set screw and the collar to turn on the axis of this rod. We need a reference point right here. The next step is to take a pair of vice grips and clamp them on the rod so that you can still see the mark. I see the mark here. But you want the gap of the flat blade screwdriver to fit in there, kind of like this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this set screw and we're going to apply pressure against this and it's going to force this, this uh, collar onto the pressure washers and it's going to retain or restore the proper tension. So the next step is you need a 564 Allen wrench. Here we go. And we loosen that screw up. There it is, it's loose. Now we turn this screwdriver in here like this, apply tension, and retighten the Allen set screw. Essentially what we've done is we've moved it over, we've applied pressure to these pressure washers, and now when we turn the knob, we're gonna see that it's actually much more snug and it stays where we put it. So that's how you adjust that tension on the pressure washers right here. All right, very good, thank you. All right, now we just wanted to show you finally the inner workings of the bimetallic coil thermostat. You can see the gears moving, changing the air intake. And let's say we've got a comfortable setting for our stove. What we're going to see happen here is as this bimetallic coil heats up with your fire, it expands and it will automatically close the flap, reducing the combustion air just a touch. This prevents it from overfiring or spiking in temperature quickly. And then as the bimetallic coil cools down, it will automatically introduce more combustion air, keeping your burn more steady. Check it out. We're gonna heat it up, it'll expand and reduce our combustion air. I haven't changed the dial at all. I've got it set where I like it for my home. And then we'll cool it down. You saw it expand, introducing more combustion air. Good stuff. Uh, one final thing to note, if anything in this gearbox appears broken, especially the coil, anything in there, um, this is not a serviceable part. They don't make a replacement coil or anything, you'll just be replacing the whole thermostat unit, which is the box and the rod. Please consult your dealer for that part number. Okay, now we've come to the back of the stove. We're going to be talking about the pathway that combustion air takes. Um, Blaze King does offer outside air combustion options if you like. It's not required, but you can choose between a 3 inch outside air intake or a 4 inch. They recommend 3 inches for an equivalent venting length of 11 feet or less. 
And that's the venting going outside, that's 11 feet equivalent venting there. Or if you have more than 11 feet of equivalent venting length, you upsize to the four inch. Your outside air plate mounts to the bottom like that with two screws, one on either side. And you can source venting wherever you like to run it outside. Now air, path for combustion air, moves up from the bottom of the stove along the sides here, entering through the bimetallic coil thermostat. Once it enters here, we do have this cut away for demonstration purposes, but your stove would be covered up here where the air travels through there, through this tube, on the top of the firebox, and then it's entering the firebox here, above the door, creating an air wash across the glass.